Hi, my name is Jennifer McComb and I'm President and CEO of the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys. I'm so happy you tuned in today to join us for the 21st Annual Unsung Heroes Celebration. Today we're celebrating over 80 Volunteers of the Year from nonprofits across the Florida Keys. Each nonprofit is able to nominate one volunteer who has done something very special for their organization, whether it's packing food at a food bank, picking up trash on the beach, or helping in the library. We have all kinds of volunteers and they're all tuned in today along with our boards of directors and other friends and family. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jackie Starfish, and we have the incomparable Calamari Cooper. And we are here to celebrate you, the unsung heroes who volunteered their time throughout the Florida Keys. Let's begin our program all the way down in Key West, where we honor a man who has been volunteering since before Jackie Starfish could read. It's very true. And he's been volunteering with his organization, the Friends of the Key West Library, since, like she said, before I could read. Shh. Thank you for being a friend. Hey. Denison Temple, come on down. It's my great pleasure to introduce Denison Temple as the Friends of the Key West Library's 2021 Volunteer of the Year. Denison has, has had a long and a great relationship with the Friends. My admiration for Denison has always been high, soared a couple of years ago. I was back in the reference section where we had a permanent in-house sales shelf, where patrons paid for books on an honor basis. And I thought I saw an opportunity to include a couple of books which had gone unsold at the last monthly sale. I asked the librarian if she had a key to the friend's storeroom. We got to chatting and she said yes but then went on to say that Denison was in and working on the selection almost every day. I couldn't believe my ears, a volunteer working nearly daily on our behalf and no one knew. Hello, my name is Denison Temple and I work for the Friends of the Library. I have done so for 22 years. In uh, the winter of 87, no sorry, 97, 98, I um, was asked to run the book sales here for the Friends of the Library. I thought, well, maybe I can do that. I don't know. We'll see how that works. And 22 years later, here I am still doing it. So when, when we talk about the Friends, uh, what is it that we really do and, and why are we here? Well, I think, number one, we're here to support the library. So we also are really trying to get the, the whole community involved in and using the library and aware of all of its facilities, all the things it does. We do support very strongly uh, the reference room. We've worked over the years to maintain the, make sure that the humidity, for example, could be maintained at a level consistent with uh, the most important records in Monroe County of our own history, not degrading over time. This was a major project. Friends of the library, of course, as uh, Tom Clemens said, they provided us with a lot of money, a lot of equipment, a lot of support, and keeping the equipment running, but they've also provided us with a lot of volunteers. My job is to take care of all of the donations that come into the library. This is a very literary community, as you can imagine, so a lot of people buy books and give them to the library when they're finished with them. So we get an incredible assort assortment of books, and uh, we then sort them out. And then they will be um, put out here in the Palm Garden once a month during the winter, at least before pandemic. And uh, we, um, we generate um, oh, a couple of thousand dollars um, for these um, book sales. And the books are only going for a dollar or two um, each. So it's amazing how many um, people come along here and buy up our books. And it's some um, nice input for the community, um, the um, Monroe County budget, which is never quite enough for the library's um, wish list. And we're able to, um, to supplement that very generously. So we're very much a community organization very much in support of the library, very much of trying to make Monroe County and the city of Key West leaders in the nation in terms of library participation, 
use and usefulness. Well, uh, Denison, as uh, the other people have told you, is a great volunteer. He spent a lot of time volunteering for the library. But one of the things he always does is he looks out and when he's going through volunteer and makes stuff, if anything historic shows up, he brings it to us. In addition to his volunteer work, uh, Dennis has also done a lot of work in the preservation of Key West. This is an institution here, the library, which um, is very good for a small town, but if I can work with the friends to generate more money to give them more um, advantages, um, that seems to be a very, very good, um, good thing. It's a very pleasant place to come to. Um, and before the pandemic, I was coming in here literally every day just to see if there are new donations that I should deal with. It just makes me feel good. Um, I guess it's just giving to the community and um, I, I'm getting benefit from it as well. Thank you, Denison, for raising the roof on volunteering. Setting that bar high. Appreciate it. Woo -woo. And now it's time to recognize a number of individuals. And now it's time to recognize a number of individuals. That's what I said. A positive step of Monroe County, Rob DeRouse. A.H. of Monroe County, Steve Torrance. Anchors Away Club, Lori Marshall. Anne McKee Artist Fund, Danny Holliday. Bahama Village Music Program, Sally Bernard. Boys and Girls Clubs of the Keys area, Adrian Lynn Casimir. Conk Republic Marine Army, Steve Estes. Coral Restoration Foundation, Patty Gross. Cornerstone Resource Alliance, Peter Bennett. Domestic Abuse Shelter, Jennifer Powell. Educational Coalition of Monroe County, Tina Bellotti and Christina Bellotti. Firm Keys, Mel Montag. First Baptist Church of Isla Morada, Heather Neal. Florida Keys Assisted Care Coalition, Joan Higgs and Edwin Swift III. Florida Keys Children's Shelter, Kids Come First, Samuels House and Wesley House, Cheryl Cates. Keys Community Land Trust, Maggie Whitcomb. Florida Keys Council of the Arts, Mary Carlin and Bill Porter. Susan Mitchell, Florida Keys Drowning Prevention Task Force. Florida Keys Foster Adoptive Association, Lori Stikes. Florida Keys Healthy Start Coalition, Commodore Rosemary Thomas. Florida Keys History and Discovery Foundation, Vivian Morrison. Florida Keys Outreach Coalition, Ruth Cahoon. Florida Keys SPCA, Sarah Hooben Van Gurner. Friends of the Key West Library, Denison Temple. Janet Bangle, Fringe Theater Key West. Girl Scouts of Tropical Florida, Jacqueline North. Thank you for all you do for our community. And we'll be bringing you more of that throughout the show. So stay tuned and see if you can spot a familiar face from your island in the sun. Um, How you feeling, Jackie Starfish? You know what, I'm not feeling well. Aww. I think we need to head to the Lower Keys Medical Center. They will do the job that needs to be done. Oh yeah, straight sailing. Mm, fix me up right. My name's David Clay, I'm the CEO at Lower Keys Medical Center. Over the past four years, it's been an honor to sponsor the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys Unsung Heroes. The event looks really different this year, but more than ever, the work you've done is so important to the people of the Florida Keys. Whether you're feeding the hungry, providing shelter and necessities, lifting financial burdens of our community, or making sure basic health and human services are available, you make a profound difference in everything that you do. And we're truly appreciative of that. Lower Keys Medical Center is your community hospital and has a family of over 400 members of the community. COVID-19 has put a strain on all of us. When I look at the strain that's put on the community and I look at my coworkers, I can't be more proud of when I see them take great quality care and service for all of our patients that we treat. 
This year has not slowed down our mission of providing as much quality care to our community. In the past year, we have been accredited by the Joint Commission as a primary stroke center of excellence, adding to our accreditation by the American College of Cardiology as a chest pain center of excellence. The growth of our cardiac cath lab, investments in new technology and equipment, and continued recruitment of medical specialties has allowed more patients to receive quality care close to home. Through our multi-specialty office Keys Medical Group, we can now provide general and interventional cardiology, gastroenterology, ENT, obstetrics and gynecology, orthopedic surgery, pulmonary medicine, and psychiatry. We have also expanded our primary care base to three locations, including a convenient office in Searstown that is open seven days a week. In addition, all of our offices are able to provide telemedicine, which is extremely important during these times. We will continue to offer opportunities to provide more services to our community. Working together, we will continue to strengthen our unique and beautiful community. Thank you, and I hope you have a blessed day. running on up to Isla Morada so we can honor Vivian Morrison. And the Florida Keys History and Discovery Center. Let's go. Welcome to Keys History and Discovery Center on the property of the Islander Resort in Isla Morada. We are a history and discovery museum, a world-class museum covering a vast array of history from the Indians and First People to Spanish treasure fleets of the 1733 and pirates, wreckers, and uh, salvagers, as well as the building of Flagler's Railroad and the stories of the development of the Upper Keys communities through the 35 hurricane. We also have Moat Marine Laboratory Aquariums, Coral Reef Exploration, featuring three different aquariums. And on the second floor, we have a state-of-the-art theater showing documentaries as well as a current exhibit, traveling exhibit called On Fly in the Salt. We are grateful to the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys for offering us an opportunity to honor a volunteer. The Keys History and Discovery Center is pleased to honor Vivian Morrison, our volunteer coordinator. She has been a volunteer with, with us for about three years and we had a, she has a wonderful skill set and a wonderful enthusiasm for our mission to preserve and share the history of the keys and the ecology of our ecosystem. And we asked her to get more involved and be our volunteer coordinator to put together our core of volunteers of about 30 people. And Vivian handles with a smile and with so much passion our volunteer schedule. We are staffed totally by volunteers. If it wasn't for Vivian and our other volunteers, we wouldn't be able to be open. I'm Vivian Morrison. I'm a resident of Isla Morada. I've been a volunteer with the Florida Keys History and Discovery Center for about three years now. I love my role here. Uh, it's a wonderful facility. It's a great community resource. I learn something new every time I come. I am happy to round up our wonderful coalition of volunteers who help us keep our doors open. Every once in a while we'll get somebody that'll call and tell us about some cool thing they found in their grandfather's attic and they want to bring it by and see if we can tell them about it. Uh, we get some very interesting requests from locals who use this as a resource for general knowledge for school projects and the community at large. There's special events here that take place that continue to educate our community about the importance of the history of our area. I'm really honored to have been selected for this award. I really appreciate it, but more importantly I appreciate the work of all the volunteers here. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Jill Miranda Baker, the Executive Director of the Florida Keys History and Discovery Center in Isla Morada on the property of the Islander Resort. I hope you will take some time to come up and visit with us at some point. Thanks again for being here. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. We were just inside the History and Discovery Center. Discovering history, it's a must-see. You gotta Whoa. check it out. Gotta check it out. And you know what? 
Let's see if we can discover some more unsung heroes. How do you like that segue? Good Health Clinic, Pamela Molinero. Guidance Care Center, Dr. John Norris. Habitat for Humanity of Key West and Lower Florida Keys, Rich Fielder. Vicki Steed, Habitat for Humanity of the Middle Keys. Habitat for Humanity of the Upper Keys, David Helwig. Island Dolphin Care, Wendy McHugh. Just Older Youth, Betsy Face. Key West Art and Historical Society, Tio and Loretta Chapa. Key West Art Center and Gallery, Haley Harriet. Mike Vickery, Key West Community Sailing Center. Key West Garden Club, Dave Deck. Key West Impromptu Classical Concerts, Lynn Williams. Key West Orchid Society, Frank Smith. Marty Hirsch, Key West Sunrise Rotary. Key West Tropical Forest and Botanical Garden, Pat Forgans. Key West Riders Guild, Laura Knight. Margaret Bitstray, Keys to Be the Change. Last Stand, Diane Baraldson. Leadership Monroe County, Leah Stockton. Legal Services of Greater Miami, Richard Malafi. Mary Casanova, Literacy Volunteers of America, Monroe County. Living Springs Counseling, Sylvia Maltzman. Lower Keys League of Women Voters, Joan Wallen. Mangrove Mike's Endeavors, Sheriff Rick Ramsey. Marathon Garden Club, Linnea Cunningham. Marvelous Pet Rescues, Annie Johnston. Matacombe Historical Trust, Clay Crockett. Mark Lankner and Jarrett Nyshik, Metropolitan Community Church, Cooking with Love. Hey, Jackie Starkish. Yo. Guess what? What? Do you know how old the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys is? I don't know. Well, they're now legal to, what? to rent a car. Oh, that means 25 years of service. What? Quarter Fantastic life crisis. Fantastic work. Hi, I'm Jennifer McComb, President and CEO of the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys. The Community Foundation of the Florida Keys is celebrating a very special anniversary this year. We're turning 25 and we've really come a long way. I'm told that back in the 1990s, a group of very passionate people in Key West were standing around in a swimming pool talking about how they could do better for philanthropy and further philanthropy throughout the Florida Keys and Key West. We're so proud that we've come this far. We give out over $1.3 million a year, and in total, we've given out over $30 million to nonprofits across the Keys. I'm Rosie Ware. Why am I involved with the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys? Simply because I love our community, and I want it to thrive long after I'm gone. And that's just what the CFFK was set up to do. Through donor advised funds, through legacy endowments, through emergency relief funds, the Community Foundation helps our community thrive. Hi, I'm John Landau. I'm Julie Landau. And you're at our home in Isla Morada, and uh, it's with great pride that I call Isla Morada my home. One of the things that we really loved and we discovered about being in the Keys is the incredible sense of community. We chose to live in Key West over 30 years ago, and like many of you who are watching, we fell in love with the island. The weather, the flora and the fauna, the architecture, the food, the arts. But we chose to stay because of the community. The way everybody cares about each other here. The amazing number of non-profit organizations all help our community to thrive. We have non-profits that take care of the arts, education, children's welfare, the Mark House, feeding those who are food deprived, and building houses. So when I found out about the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys, which serves all of these nonprofits throughout the Keys, I knew I'd find somewhere that would help me help others in our community. 
It was after Hurricane Irma when we wanted to do something to help the community that we saw so devastated up and down the Keys from Irma that we learned of the foundation. And we created a fund and we reached out to our friends who had visited us. So we weren't taking from the community. We weren't, didn't want to raise money from people in the community. They were going to give anyway. We wanted to reach outside to people who had seen how special the Keys were. The Community Foundation of the Florida Keys knew where that money needed to go to. They knew how to get it into the hands of the people who were most in need. Everything went back to the community. And that was something that was really great to see. We've been able to help out with disasters, including Hurricane Wilma, Hurricane Irma, and back in 2020, we helped with the pandemic with three different COVID-19 relief funds. We've really been busy helping nonprofits and residents throughout the Florida Keys. My husband and I have donated to the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys over the years, but particularly for the emergency relief funds that the CFFK always set up after any disaster, be it a hurricane or like the pandemic right now. The foundation has always been there for those in need when they need it. What makes it special are, are the friends that we've found here in the Keys. I look forward to when uh, the pandemic is behind us and uh, we as a community of the Keys can be out because it's sharing those moments with people that, that make the Keys so special. The Keys will be facing our biggest opportunities and challenges over the next few decades. With the changing climate, our fragile infrastructure, the challenges to our economy, the aging population, but plus the wonderful renaissance of the arts here. The CFFK are in a unique position to help and to help the community thrive, not just for the next 25 years, but for years to come. Looking to the future, we're really excited about the next 25 years and beyond. We're continuing to help the hundreds of nonprofits throughout the Florida Keys. We are your community in Paradise for Good. I'm Rosie Ware. Let's drink to the next 25 years and carry on enjoying the show. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Jennifer McComb with the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys. I don't think you needed me here because he does all the talking. <laughs> Just got to smile more at the end. <laughs>And we head back down the Keys to Marathon in Key West. Keep paddling, Jackie. <laughs> you got it. Well, we'll hear from Keys Weekly. And uh, you'll see a couple more of these uh, friendly faces and volunteers. I think we got a, a dog's legs left. I think. Oh, that's this one? Yeah. Uh, hello. Oh, uh, we've sprung a leak in our boat. <laughs> I'll paddle. <laughs> Oh, you don't drink the seawater. I'm thirsty. It's okay. Land ho! Hi, I'm Britt Myers, and uh, on behalf of myself in the Keys Weekly Media, Keys Weekly Newspapers and Digital Marketing, uh, we can't be more proud to be a sponsor alongside our friends at Lower Keys Medical for the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys. And we're very pleased to be a part of the Unsung Heroes. as most of you know the Florida Keys is built on community service and those who give back and there's not a greater place in the world than the Florida Keys for that. And for those that get the recognition, a lot of times it's well deserved, uh, we thank them, but CFFK really does a great job of finding those folks who are the unsung heroes and really celebrate and pay tribute to them who really embrace the idea of doing the right thing, doing good things when no one else is looking. My name is Valerie Edgington and I volunteer for the organization of Sister Season in Key West, Florida. Volunteering, it makes life, for me, worth living. We just, we make life a lot better by helping other people and I think that one person can make a difference and if we show a little bit of compassion and a little bit of love, um, I think we can change the world. The Educational Coalition from Monroe County um, works with youth most at risk in, um, in Marathon or that attend Marathon High School. I grew up um, volunteering in this community and have continued to do so. I've been volunteering in this community since 1995 and for me volunteering is the heartbeat of Marathon. Um, it's, it's who we are and it's 
making an impact on people's lives that enriches my life. Hi, my name is Vicki Stead and I volunteer for Habitat for Humanity of the Middle Keys. Volunteering is just good for my soul, it's good for the community, it's good to pay things forward and just put your heart out there for people that need help. <laughs> my name is June and I have been a volunteer and donator for the Mark House for way over 20 years. Oh, it means everything to me uh, because I have seen well, quite a few of the clients grow up from, from young people to retired ages and, uh, and I've made many, many, many friends. My name is Steve Estes and I'm representing the Conquer Public Marine Army. Conquer Public Marine Army is a marine debris clearing organization built up of thousands of volunteers who give thousands of hours of volunteer labor to clean near shore waters and shorelines of Hurricane Irma debris that's been here for three years. Volunteering adds to my life by giving me a focus, helping me to learn more about the things I love, which are plants. But in the process, I meet people and make friends and go home feeling like I've done something worthwhile. And I tell you, it's very rewarding and you help a lot of people and that's the main thing. And we have a lot of people down here in the Keys that do need help. And we're very proud to be doing it. Our organization fights for fair and, and equitable insurance rates throughout Monroe County. Volunteering adds uh, a lot to me, to my life professionally and personally. Fighting and making sure that the insurance rates that we pay here are equitable and that people can afford to live here. I love giving back to the community. I've only been in Key West for three years and it is just with such joy that I am able to meet new people and help pay it forward. For the Unsung Heroes, thank you for what you do. We're the beneficiaries for being a part of this with COFK. So thank you and uh, looking forward to the next 25 years. And this is it, folks. If you haven't seen your friendly face, now's the time. We are in our final round of volunteers. So uh, look harder. <laughs> or maybe volunteer yourself and be friendly about it. Rack up those hours. Monroe Association for Remarkable Citizens. June Klausing. Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. Clayton Pelkey. Navy League of the United States Key West Council. Kathy Russ. Linda Downs and Angela Majors, Old Island Restoration Foundation. One Island Family, the Southernmost Unitarian Universalist Congregation, Amelia Hanley. Red Barn Theater, Tana Jones. Reef Environmental Education Foundation, Nancy Perez. Rotary Club of Key Largo, James Hack. Rural Health Network of Monroe, Vivian Roberts. Save Our Pines, Brewster Chamberlain. Sister Season Fund, Valerie Edgington. Southernmost Coconut Castaways, John and Sandy Gruton. Southernmost VFW Post number 3911, Rod Delastrinos. Special Olympics, Florida Monroe County, William Bill Anderson. St. Paul's Episcopal Church, Ken Bagg. The Studios of Key West, Shelley Chase. Monroe County Education Foundation, Take Stock in Children, Mark Funt. The Basilica School of St. Mary, Star of the Sea, Christina Matheson. The Salvation Army, Florida Keys, Susie Puskedra. The Waypoint Foundation, Christine Morgan. Tropic Cinema, Benjamin Egnat. United Way of Collier and the Keys, Mike Forrester. Unity of the Keys Spiritual Center, Nancy Callahan. Robert Stewart, 
Upper Keys Community Foundation. Upper Keys Humane Society, K. Shylon Martin and Lisa Sladen. Zonta Club of the Keys, Bonnie Helms. Our final featured volunteer is someone who spent a lifetime serving our community here in the Florida Keys. Mrs. Cheryl Cates. All of us at the Community Foundation are so happy that four different nonprofits honored Mrs. Cheryl Cates this year as their unsung hero. Mrs. Cates is very special to me because I worked with her to organize the Children's Shelter's Mayor's Ball in Key West. I got to know her very well. I learned that she wanted the tables arranged in a certain way. In fact, she wanted pretty much everything done a certain way, but it was for a great cause. She wanted to make sure that kids in the Florida Keys got everything they need. All of us will sure miss Cheryl Cates. She had such a kind heart and helped so many nonprofits. She really made a difference here in the Florida Keys. Hi, I'm Ben Kemmer. I'm the CEO of the Florida Keys Children's Shelter. The Florida Keys Children's Shelter serves hundreds of children in the Florida Keys on an annual basis. So the, the Mayor's Ball helped fund all of our programs um, throughout the Keys. Um, it helped fund our emergency shelters, it helped fund our group homes, it helped fund our community-based counselors, it helped fund our street outreach um, center, Project Lighthouse in, in Key West. Cheryl, she would, she would be basically you know, the life of the mayor's ball. She, she, from planning to making sure that every piece of, you know, what is a, you know, a 350 guest gala would run perfect. We couldn't be more grateful for everything she did for, you know, the Florida Keys Children's Shelter, you know, and the kids and the families of the Florida Keys. Hi, I'm Roxanne Posada, Executive Director of Kids Come First. Cheryl Cates was very important to our organization. She uh, built us up in every aspect. To our loving conk sister, Cheryl Cates. We all know for Cheryl, kids always come first in the Florida Keys. It really doesn't matter the age of that kid from zero to 99. It really doesn't matter where you came from or who you are. She was a sister that would step in and help anyone in any situation. Cheryl loved people and listening to their story. She would call me up or stop by our kids' closet and tell me that a friend she knew could possibly use some clothes and shoes. Or she would say, I found someone that needs something to do. Do you need a volunteer? Over the years, Cheryl made sure that our shelves were stocked. She would just pop into the closet, run her eyes over the inventory, and send a message to all our contacts. Then within days, our shelves would start filling up and we would go bargain shopping with the monetary donations. Christmas was amazing this year for the thousand plus children gifted in the Keys. Toys, bikes, scooters, clothing, shoes, gift cards, and monetary donations all arrived with the same message attached. My donation is in honor of Cheryl Cates. When we hear your name, we will think of you and your contagious kindness. Kids come first forever, Angel. You are loved and missed. From the heart, kids come first, Fox and family. Hi, my name is Tara Salinas and I'm the executive director of Samuel's House. I'm here with Elmira Lito, our founder. We wanted to take this opportunity to honor Ms. Cheryl Cates for her years of dedication to Samuel's House, her contributions, everything that she did for us, she went above and beyond, and she went above and beyond for this community. She was on our board for over 15 years. Over 15. Ms. Cheryl, there was never a project that was too big or too small for her to take on. Um, I know that in one instance she even came up with shoes for the kids in I think a little less than 24 hours. She was, there was nothing she couldn't do. She was a quintessential Cheryl Cates. I wanted to take this time to have Elmira tell us a little bit about some of her memories and her experiences. Uh, I had the honor of knowing Cheryl since she was a young woman. Uh, we did the teen center, her and Craig and six other adults uh, did the teen center on the boulevard. That used to be a, a live and well teen center that we worked on for six months and lost fingernails, everything for the youth of Monroe County. We'd have. Um, 
events there and Cheryl and Craig always stepped to the plate and did everything whatever we asked and just always community minded Cheryl was and um, anything when I started Samuel's house in 1999 I asked her to be on the board of directors and she joined us and it's been over 15 years that she uh, worked with Samuel's house and like Tara was saying she did everything from gathering uh, she would call her angels as she mm -hmm. called them and she would say the shelter needs this the shelter needs that she gathered Easter baskets shoes clothes I'll never forget I asked her for diapers once and we had within the hour we had over 400 diapers <laughs> delivered on the doorstep so she did have uh, uh, angels always with her we're going to give a challenge out there too that we're going to build a home in her honor uh, she loved the women she loved the children and she loved families and she deserves a home and we look forward to continuing to help everyone that we can and we thank you for all of your assistance and we thank you for all of your support yes thank you on behalf of Wesley House Family Services, it is with great honor and with great sorrow to present our unsung hero to our beloved board member, the late Cheryl Cates. Joining the board in 2010, Cheryl was an extraordinary advocate for our children and families in this community. She was always full of grace and it showed how she lived her life every single day. She could command a room and make hearts and wallets open with the help of her friends to benefit those that were most vulnerable in this community. She is irreplaceable to our community and our organization, and her name will be forever remembered with a smile. Cheryl is not just our hero, but she's a hero to the countless children and families she's helped over the years. We thank Cheryl for her dedication and know her efforts will live forevermore in the hearts of those that she's helped along the way. Cheryl Cates was truly the best of our community. Her love, dedication, and support was felt throughout our chain of islands. From Samuel's house to Wesley house, and truthfully most houses in our community, Cheryl's leadership was not only felt, but needed. If anything good can possibly come out of us losing such a treasure of our community, it's the Cheryl Cates Fund that will be set up in the near future to support the causes that she cared deeply about and worked tirelessly to support. Let's all think about Cheryl. Let's all think about what we can do to give back to this community. We love and miss her every day but we will continue her legacy into the future. We have a special presentation by Dr. Sarah Conrath. Dr. Sarah Conrath, and she is here to, to share a video on uh, why volunteering I, makes you happy. I would like to volunteer that information, please. Go ahead. You already did. Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Conrad, a professor at Indiana University and Notre Dame University who studies the science of giving. Today, I'm going to give you a tour of the many different ways that giving can be good for givers, according to science. The joy of giving. I made this video for the Florida Keys 21st Annual Unsung Hero Celebration, which was organized by the Community Foundation of the Florida Keys. We're here to celebrate volunteers like you, and thank you for your service. Many of us believe that if we only had more time and money, we would be happier. In fact, there's much research finding that giving away our time and money makes us happier, even though, of course, after giving, we have less for ourselves. Research finds that people who regularly volunteer have higher happiness, self-esteem, and psychological well-being than those who don't. They also have lower rates of depression, Helping others doesn't need to be done in the context of a nonprofit organization to increase well-being. Research finds that being kind to others in many different ways feels pretty good. What about giving away money? Research finds that giving money to others, including charities, makes people happier than spending it on themselves. In fact, simply remembering a time that you spent money on others has similar mood-boosting effects. Even when people are aware of the potential happiness benefits of giving, this doesn't reduce the psychological rewards. Even more incredible is that these happiness boosts are noticeable by others. The joy of giving is written on your face. These effects are pretty strong and have been found in many studies. And yet, most people think they'll be happier when spending money on themselves instead of others. But as volunteers of the year, you've already discovered this is not true. Research finds that giving money makes people feel richer. 
and giving time to others can lead to feelings of time affluence. This is despite the fact that objectively, people have less money and less time because they just gave some away. Scientists have also found that giving is contagious. People's giving behavior spreads into their closest friendships and family members and into their broader social networks. Volunteers like you are creating a kindness pandemic. Giving enriches people's social relationships, both in quantity and quality. Kind people are likable and others want to be around them. In fact, the number one trait that both men and women are looking for in a romantic partner is kindness. And research finds that when young people are asked to increase their kind behaviors, they actually become more popular with their peers. Volunteering and donating money can help people to meet others who share similar passions and more deeply enmeshes people within their local communities. One study found that older adults who volunteered had more social connections six months later, but those who didn't volunteer actually had a decline over time. The joy of giving is written on your body. For example, when people donate money, the pleasure and reward centers of the brain light up as much as when they receive money. And my research finds that caring and empathic people have lower stress hormones during a challenging time. Giving can also make people physically stronger, at least temporarily. In one study, people who donated money were able to hold a five pound weight for longer than those who didn't donate. The feeling of making a difference is literally energizing. So maybe you should plan a gym visit after you give. People who volunteer have lower cardiovascular risk factors like lower inflammation, blood pressure, cholesterol, and body mass index. My research finds that volunteers are more likely to take preventative health measures, like getting flu shots, and they're less likely to end up in the hospital. Given this, maybe it's not surprising that research finds that volunteers have a 47% reduced risk of dying compared to non-volunteers. My research has compared different types of giving to find out which ones are best for health. I've found that older adults who see themselves as more caring are less likely to die 13 years later. Also, older adults who give their time in any form, whether it's volunteering, helping friends, or caregiving, are also less likely to die. But those who give their money away don't benefit. This is actually good news. Most of us can try to become more caring, and most of us can spend our time doing kind deeds for others, even if we don't have much money. Research has found that giving time and money is associated with more happiness and health in older adults, middle-aged adults, young adults, teens, and even children. But the benefits of giving tend to become stronger as people get older, possibly because that's when years of habits, including giving habits, show their effects on the mind and body. People from many cultures around the world experience the benefits of giving. Volunteering is associated with higher well-being in 86% of cultures worldwide, and better health in 88% of cultures. Donating to charity is associated with higher well-being in 90% of cultures worldwide. These results are similar even in poor countries where resources are scarce. I'm going to wrap up by sharing four key ways that can help you to maximize your own joy of giving. First, V is for variety, the spice of giving. Research finds that giving in a variety of different ways and to different types of recipients makes people happier than giving in the same way and to the same recipients over and over again. Even your favorite food would get boring if you ate it every day, and giving is similar. If you want to maximize your joy of giving, try new kinds once in a while. Second, A is for altruistic attitudes. It's not always necessary to actually give in order to experience the joy of giving. The psychological aspects of giving and donating are as important as the behaviors themselves. For example, Simply counting your number of kind acts each day can make you happier. Altruistic attitudes also matter, such as saying that you enjoy helping others or that you try to help even if others can't return the favor. In one study, altruistic attitudes had bigger happiness boosting effects than actual behaviors. And in my research, seeing oneself as caring had bigger effects on reducing the risk of dying than actual behaviors. It's the thought that counts. Being ready to serve and help matters, even if actual opportunities for helping don't present themselves. Third, C is for concrete. Research finds that thinking of giving in more concrete ways, instead of more abstract ways, increases the happiness of giving. An example of an abstract way is trying to make somebody happy. 
versus a concrete example of trying to make someone smile. Finally, S is for social. The social aspects of giving are also important. For example, scientists have found that the happiness effects of volunteering double when it directly involves interacting with others compared to less social types of helping. We've been hearing about a vax in the news, but if you want to maximize the joy of giving, you can give yourself this vax. Make sure your giving has variety, altruism, is concrete, and is social. In helping others, we are also helping ourselves. And during such a difficult time, we all need a little help. Thank you again to all you volunteers of the year for bringing so much joy to your community. And thank you to the Lower Keys Medical Center for sponsoring this event, honoring them. Some people say we should give till it hurts, but now you know, we should actually give until it feels good. Hey, thanks everybody for tuning in out there in a magical uh, internet land. It's not, they don't do it on a TV. Is it a TV? A monitor. You're on a monitor. Or a phone. Or a projector. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, you guys go out there and volunteer for your community down here in the Florida Keys. Keep up the hard work. We love you. This is uh, Jackie Starfish signing off with Calamari Cooper. See you guys again. Mwah. Later. We want to thank our sponsors, the Lower Keys Medical Center, Keys Weekly, and the producers of this wonderful event, Wonder Dog Studios. Appreciate it, guys and gals. Couldn't have done it without you. Love ya. Thanks, people. Florida Keys Community Found in the The volunteers who volunteered for. Uh, no. No, that made sense. See, <laughs> do you have another word? <laughs> yeah. Go for it. We're a mound of dirt in the ocean. What's your favorite bridge? Um, mine is the Channel 5. Uh. <laughs> Crunk for volunteering. Uh, 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 Give it up. Gonna crunk it up. Uh, volunteering. Uh, Here we go. There's people on the island. <laughs> They're talking back to us. Where we honor Denison Templeton. Denison Temple. Tennyson Temple. Denison! Check it out. Call me.